So hello and welcome to my 100 days of making comics vlog, singing with Jiggy. So, well, lately I've been having problems uploading videos. The last video I uploaded took me more than a week to do it. So it's very tiring, very taxing. It's like the hardest part of doing this challenge is uploading videos. My internet connection is just not um, fast enough, good enough. Basically, it's just not something enough. Yes, so lately I've been thinking about what um, what things I would need for for um, the convention and with that I decided to actually buy some stuff online like I make cat stickers um, one day and maybe I'll show you my adorable cat stickers but I make cat stickers and I need a nice way to package the cat stickers so more people will buy them in a set so um, one sticker is 15 and for set it's 50 um, this is in peso so it's not it's like a dollar the set is just one dollar technically this one set is one dollar technically so like that's not that expensive but considering how much money it takes to actually print out the stickers it's actually pretty fair the uh, stickers are, it's, it's really cheap to print out the stickers you know it's like it's almost all profit it's not yeah, it's not all profit, but then it's almost all profit. At least per sticker, I'm, it's technically being marked up so much over the price of producing it. Which is good, because the ability to do that means that I'm being paid more for working hard on creating stickers, as not necessarily just being paid mostly for producing something, which is what happens most of the time when you're making items like comics for instance like you the my markup is very low um i sell the first issue of oddity for 220 and there that's just that's less than the 50 peso markup i believe i already forgot the price of actually having it printed but that's less than a 50 peso markup and 50 pesos is one dollar so that's less than a dollar markup so that's not a lot of money um, and it doesn't feel enough considering that you I sorry I worked hard on the product as opposed to how much hard work it took to create it yeah sure the resources and all of that but still like the weight of you doing something always feels larger than the weight of something being produced and that's why it doesn't feel very right but then for stickers luckily stickers are fine um i also brought um their wedding stand things their stands for wedding numbers i mean like the numbers on the tables and weddings i don't really know what to call them rather than signs and they're relatively small and they should work with a comic book one of them has like um one of them has like a, a speech balloon sort of design so like since i'm making comics that'll be nice in addition to that i also went ahead and bought this thing um it's also a sign thing for weddings, but it has this little tiny stand. And because it has a stand, I was thinking maybe I could use the stands for the comic. Well, you're like, why didn't you just buy a stand? Because you can't get the stand without the other thing. And in addition, the other the whiteboard thing that comes with the stand is actually pretty pretty useful. Yeah. That's what happened today. Ugh. Okay, so um, I've also yeah, yeah. Ugh. You can see me inking, right? Or you can see me. Oh no, I'm toning now. So you can see me toning, right? Like 
Can you feel the degree of which I have no clue as to what I'm doing? Because I basically don't have a clue. Well, it's a Tony, it's green, but I still don't have a clue. Either way, I don't have a clue. So, I'm really just testing things out. Like, I feel like I should have a pattern to put there because, you know, that's foliage and foliage is not a solid color. But I don't want it to look like a super realistic tree. I mean, this scene is in the dark, like darkness. It's supposed to be in the darkness and in the darkness I don't think you really notice the foliage you notice more of the shading underneath the leaves which occurs because of course the under of a tree is darker than the top of a tree yeah so foliage <laughs> um, so in school this week I had Three exams, I think I had three exams, yeah I had three exams, I had three exams or was it just two exams, okay last week I had three exams in the entire week, this week I have only two exams. Yeah, so the l last week with the three exams is really hell. We had to do something about animals, or was it? Okay, here. Um, so the way school works is that, or my biology class works, is that there is a part that is animals. I mean, the part that's laboratory and the part that's just a lecture. And so we had two lecture exams and one plant exam, one lab laboratory exam on plants. So one of the exams in the lecture is for plants, the other one is for animals. Ugh. It was, it was quite difficult, but I did pretty well at both, so I'm quite happy. I mean, like, I feel like I did pretty well. Who knows, right? Maybe I failed both of them. You know that feeling when you feel like you've done right? But then the truth is that you probably just didn't understand it and you think you were doing, you're doing this right, but in reality, you were doing something wrong. You know, there's always a fear of that. Um, so, yeah, that was, that was painful. Mm. So this week, this week, I, this week, I had two more exams, and shit, I just remembered I got my exam scores from last week. Okay, I did pretty well. Oh, my brain. Anyway, so this week I had two more exams, and they were in genetics, yeah, genetics, and plant development so anyway the gist of it is that now i have a bunch of stock knowledge and random facts about plants animals and genetics which may or may not be important for me in the future of my career as a scientist or an artist i don't know i don't know where my life is headed i only know is i want to make comics and i like science that's all I know about myself. Oh, God help me. Anyway, so there. Um, would you like to know anything about plants and animals? I can tell you lots of things about plants and animals. I can tell you lots and lots of things. Um, I will. I will tell you things about plants and animals if you don't want to know. Ah, if you don't want me to tell you random things about plants and animals, then just um, you can actually just leave the video. You can leave me here. You can even keep the video playing, you know, so I have view time thing, which is apparently important to YouTube. Or you can just uh, listen. Okay, let's first start with sunflowers. Did you know? 
that the sunflower is actually made of many flowers. Like the singular sunflower is made out of many flowers. It has disc flowers, you know, the one, the parts in the center, and then it has ray flowers, the parts in the side. And you're like, wait, but isn't the part in the center and the part inside the singular flower? And the answer to that is no. The parts in the center, like, are like full flowers. There are 100% flowers because they have all the parts that they need. You know, the pistil and the salmon, and then the flowers and the sepals and the petals and all of that shit. But the ray flowers, you know, those things that just look like petals, they just have one petal, and they don't have sexual organs. Wow, I use the word sex on the internet. YouTube, don't censor me. I'm talking about plants. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's an interesting fact, right? I find it very, very interesting. Do you remember in Adventure Time, um, there was one story, like it's a bunch of stories, and it was, you know, the one where there's this guy and he's all like, with gray poles and he's asking people about what's the common theme of these videos you know that guy yeah in one in one of the stories the one about we presume is about fingers but i think it's about sensory organs i don't remember um you see finn, finn and jake they were like putting their thumbs and saying oh what a good boy am i and then they found this frog with lots of holes in its back that frog is real. There's really a frog like that. And it's called the Pipa Pipa or the Suriname Toad. Is it Suriname? I'm, I'm not sure. You can cross check if you really wish to know. It's not as if I'm going to spell it out for you. And yeah, it's real. So basically, what happens is that the frogs, the frog eggs, are on the back of the parent and they stay there for a long time as in from tadpole from egg to tadpole until they're a mature frog when they're finally a mature frog they'll just hop on out of there just hop on out hop out another interesting frog is the darwin's frog wait i'll, I'll cross check that a bit Actually, who cares? Um, its scientific name is Rhinoderma darwini. I said Darwin, then double I. And Rhino, um, Derma as in Rhino as in rhinoceros, and Derma as in dermatologist. Yes, these are very interesting frogs. If you search them up, they have this really funny snout thing that's like pointed at the end. Basically, it's really funny looking. Um, and do you know where they keep their young? Um, it's actually one of the few examples of uh, paternal care amongst animals. But can you guess where they keep their young? You can probably Google it and tell the answer to your computer screen. But I'll tell you anyway. They <laughs> they keep their young inside their their vocal sacs. As in, like, they're inside their mouth. As in, like, when they open your mouth, you'll see a tiny version of them inside. Like one of those, like those Russian dolls that you keep opening. That's basically what they do. That's real funny. Um, and other interesting things is, did you know that, um, the... Okay, now I'm gonna start talking about mating, animal matings, because that's a huge part of my, the animal part of my curriculum. A uh, huge part of that is about mating. Animals mating, humans mating, and, um, you know, like, the, the ways to make, to help with fertility, and the ways to stop humans from being pregnant. Um, a bunch of things like that. Um, yes. So, what was I thinking about? Yeah, that's right. Um, oh my god, you should literally look this up. I'm, I'm so sad and you should be very unhappy that I'm not flashing a picture out of the screen right now. But you should um, 
search for、um, dragonflies mating or dragonflies, dragonflies or damselflies mating. They make this wheel position, which looks basically like a heart. You should Google it, like right now. Google wheel position dragonfly damselfly, and you will find a heart. Because、um, this is how it works.、Um, basically, the male attaches, hooks the female with the very tip of his abdomen at the back of her neck. Yeah, and then the woman. Well, the human. No, not the human. The woman. Um, dragonfly or damselfly. She puts the very last segment of her abdomen against the underside. The underside of her very last segment of her abdomen against the other side. Of the male's under segment of his first abdomen. What did I just say? Basically, the woman's last last segment in,、uh, against the man's first segment, which is where、um, you know their sexual the opening of their sexual organs are. So basically, this is where they make their special exchange. You know where they make the miracle of life occur. And the reason why they even do this position is to make sure said miracle of life occurs. Cause if they fly, cause you know,、um, a lot of things want to eat dragonflies, and I'm pretty sure any decent, normal human being that sees two dragonflies making a heart shape will chase after them and try to get them and maybe. Put them inside resins, or basically, people are gonna do stuff with them. Nature, most animals are gonna do stuff with them. So, in order to protect themselves, this position allows them faculty over their wings. So, male has faculty over his legs, so he can walk around, and the female can use her wings. Can only use her wings. But either way. This allows them to move while they do this. Of course, it's not like they—they won't be moving as a singular person. There's still problems when they move. However, it's not as much problems as they would have if they were doing it stationary. So the men and the women—they fly around in a heart shape, hoping that no predator takes advantage of one of them. There are many cases, apparently. Because you know nature, many things exist in nature. Therefore, there are many cases in which a one of them gets eaten alive by a predator, leaving the other one, you know, alone. They can separate when that happens. Oh come on! Like I know you, you guys probably think, oh that's not romantic for the man to leave the woman while she's being eaten by. Some sort of predatory creature, but like, think about it. Just think about it. A male dragonfly won't be able to beat up a bird. Let's be honest, that ain't happening ever. Nor won't a female butterfly be able to beat up a bird. That will never happen. So, at least one of them is alive would be better than both of them being simultaneously devoured. Yeah. Hmm. So you probably noticed I'm not talking much about plants, regardless of me having had plant exams. Yes, I've had plant exams. Well, that's because I don't like plants that much. Plants are difficult for me. They're difficult for me to feel. For some reason, even though there's significant difference between me. And I guess a rotifer. Search that one up because you probably won't understand it. Basically, they're tiny creatures, okay? Me and the rotifer, I can still understand them to a certain degree. 
because they're not plants. I don't know why. I don't, I don't know how that works. But anyway, my favorite plant is Marcantia. Um, you can search it up, yeah. But then it's not, I don't like it for any spe special reason rather than I feel like it looks cool. I mean, you'll see a clump of umbrella-like things. Um, if you search it up right now, you'll see a gigantic mass. And then on the gigantic mass are sprouting things that look like flowers and umbrellas. An interesting thing is that the gigantic mass is... There's supposed to be only one flower slash umbrella looking thing per that slither per <laughs> per gametophyte. Yeah, there's only supposed to be one of them. However, because they like clumping up together, you know, it looks like one entire thing. They're really cool. Uh, <laughs> one of these days, if you actually like biology, you can go figure out why I think it's they're cool. Because honestly, it's not something interesting to most people. <laughs> yeah. But that's my favorite plant right now. <laughs> Liverworts. Mar espe especially Marcantia. Um, Rixia is also a liverwort and it's also good, but it's just not my favorite. It's mostly because I don't see it as much. But I've seen live Rixia. You can search it up and know what I mean, but then I'm probably boring you talking to you about creatures, plants you don't know slash understand. Plants are really... They're like aliens. I have no idea what they are or why they are. They are because they are and I don't get it. Um, but I do learn to appreciate them by going through the lessons. I learn to appreciate them as being weird oddities of nature. And I probably only think so because they're not like myself. I swear I can relate more to a cockroach than a plant. And I swear most people can do as well. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, since it's almost a terminal end of this video, maybe I should start talking about art. But I don't have any much to talk about art because um, literally all I do every day is do the same thing. So this entire, well, this is around two and a half weeks, I've been making grays and making yeah because i plan to print this comic in black and white now but i still want it to be in color i'm just printing it in black and white because i know i won't make it in time for the printer um to get it in time for indie kit so yeah, that's literally the only update. Nothing new, nothing new. Um, thanks, um, bye! Have fun with your life.